I'm dizzy. Um, hello. I'm still spinning. Not that. We're not reviewing the HSU. In fact, I'm going to move that HSU out in just a minute. And we're going to put the other Ellipsin product back. This <clears throat> is the Ellipsin Prestige Facet 6B BT speaker. Thank you. I made it through. Um, I'll move this off too. Uh, this uh, re-injured a wrist from selling the yard sale, the giant $3,000 speakers, which sold for $1,300 plus shipping. So if you're wondering about yard sales, if you're a $5 patron, um, I sold a $3,000 pair of speakers for under $1,500. That's half price with shipping. It's half price. So join the $5 Patreon or subscribe to our tier to buy things like that so I can hurt my wrists packing them and moving them up and then running. Um, these are speakers. I think we've all figured that out. And I've actually had them up. I had them up during the HSU review. And they're not cheap. They're self-powered. And they're in that same vein of like oh, see, Triangle, Vanatu, Canto Tux. Uh, Jesus Christ, swans, like higher end swans in the six, six, seven hundred dollar range. They actually sell a passive version of these that's seven hundred and they want, I think, nine. Let's double check. Double check my math. Wallpaper available in the wallpaper hoard. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, yeah, this set is nine hundred dollars. If you want it unpowered, it's seven hundred dollars. So, you're paying two hundred dollars. Um, they also have a larger set of speakers. These are all from APOS, by the way. The Ellipson Prestige Fashion 8B is $1,000, and I'm imagining that's a big whomp. And I had an issue because the only thing I've experienced with Ellipson, which I keep wanting to call Epsilon, so fucking bad, was that little baby sub. And look, it's a great sub. I'll admit, the, the, the Ellipson little, little sub 8 is great. It's $900, though. And that made me do that whole video where I'm like, well, you could this or for $300 more, get this. It was a whole, like I couldn't fathom the cost for an eight inch sub. You would need specifically the tiniest sub. But speakers in the under $1,000 self-powered range, now I'm worried there's a lot of competition. Are these things even gonna compete? Cause that was good, but it was overpriced. Are these overpriced? No, they're not over. They actually sound they're worth. I was relieved. Oh, you can't imagine. Because as a reviewer and as a person who's like, I work with all these companies, with APOS, with Linsol, and Hyphago. If it's a pile of shit, I got to tell them it's a pile of shit. And I got to tell you it's a pile of shit. And while that not a pile of shit, I did not recommend it. Cost. These, however, even if you don't like the looks, because they have, I'm just going to say they have a look. It's a rather aggressive, like the kind of going to scare children look with the rubber surround that um, this is to break up the, the standing waves coming out of it. What is it called? Standing waves that are coming out of it? I, I, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. It's a waveguide. It's a waveguide dispersion, little perforations in it to sort of shape the sound with the real phase plug. That's a real phase plug that the driver moves in and out of. And it's got a big soft dome. I love, I love big soft domes. Someone's going to take that out of context. Um, the only thing I will say is that you can kind of tell, hi the Drake, what are you looking for? You're gonna go outside, I have the door open for him. The only thing I could say is when they convert these from a passive unit, which I guarantee you looks a hell of a lot like this, um, to a powered unit, they take the route that's kind of like, all right, this is kind of a cheap little remote. This looks like something you get in a Dayton speaker for $200. And they've got the big hole here with the big LED in it which kind of reminds me of like the cheaper $300 Cantos. But the thing is, while adding, oh, I had this moved for the sub, I should probably put it back. Where does that one go? Is this the waifu one? Oh, the waifu's in the dark, hold on, there we go, much better. The thing is, they're taking an already $700 speaker and just making it self-powered. If I was reviewing the passive version of these, I would listen to them on whatever amplifier setup I'd have going. And you know what? I'd be fucking impressed if they sounded close to this. What I'm thinking they're doing, which is what they're doing, because it's only, that's literally, this is just, they're changing one speaker and selling you one passive and now the new one active. For $200, I don't mind that this is a little shitty remote. That literally looks like it has a Dayton logo on it. You got your bass, your treble, your volume. Again, I will complain the volume is in the worst spot. 
it's just this little corner thing oh and then the bass and treble when you up it or down it it does a half blink to try to tell you it's back in the middle actually the treble doesn't even do that there is a reset button here in case you don't know where your bass and treble which by the way i am using an ri cable here which is a locking subwoofer cable that they sent me you screw in to run this monster sub We'll switch it out for their sub and try to give you like the full 2.1 ellipse in experience. Because, <laughs> where was I? I? I'm getting distracted. I'm getting confused. S stupid remote. Bass treble adjustments that you'll get lost and you'll forget where the hell you are and you have to reset and it resets the volume too. And kitty cat's outside. Let's see if we can get his attention. Oh. Hey, the Drake. Hi. Come in the thing. Come say hello. You're so cute. Now I have to keep this, this take. It can never go anywhere. The top you get power, pair, reset. And reset doesn't just reset the pairing. Reset sets all the settings, volume, bass, and treble. You get aux one, aux two, and optical. I'll have to look at the back of it. Then you get a Bluetooth button dedicated here and a mute button dedicated there. I would almost rather have these be volume than this because it's more centralized on the remote. Then you have your next track, last track, play, pause on the remote for Bluetooth, which normally I would have set up with the Flirk. Can I even find my Flirk? I keep talking. Oh, there it is. It's behind her knee. That's the thing that allows me to use any infrared remote to uh, control this. It's 20 bucks. Go grab a Flirk. I should just do a whole re-review on the Flirk. Buy the Drake. Have fun storming the castle. It'll take a miracle. Um, okay, so ignoring the remote, ignoring the ugly hole they put here, the porthole here that changes colors when you switch inputs. Let's look at the back for a second. Holy God, it's humid air coming in there. Let's make that go away. The back of the unit, the powered unit, port, you get your two auxiliaries. You get RCA in and a 3.5 millimeter in. The RCA can be switched from phono to line. You get a ground for using with a turntable. You get an optical input, which is what I'm using. You get your subwoofer out. The subwoofer out does not kill the base on this unit. If you plug in a wire, no sub, just plug in a wire, nothing happens. It is just feeding a signal down to that at a certain frequency cutoff. You get your volume slash power pairing knob. So you, you hit the button to turn it on. You hit the button to switch inputs, turn the knob, it's digital. You get a master power switch. You get your right speaker output. I'm gonna complain because I complain on every fucking speaker. Only those little Fios, SP3s had the switch and they didn't even need it. Where you could say, hey, you know what? All this shit, it's on that side of my room. I'm gonna put the powered unit, the master unit on the right. No one offers it. If you're using RCA, you could just switch RCAs backwards and then you could have whichever side you want, but I'm using optical. So unless I'm gonna switch it in FUBAR, it's just a pain in the ass, especially if you can use Bluetooth. It'd be nice if it had the option to switch. Instead of a switch for phono and line, a switch for this is the left speaker, this is the right speaker, and that's just other speaker. Qualcomm AptX, Bluetooth. So you get standard outputs. Uh, the wire it came with is down there. It's just a stripped piece of black wire. You could tell the company just like, uh, make a powered version. Uh, buy this plate amp. Uh, yeah, whatever remote is fine. Uh, strip wire is fine. So I'm using a mica cable because it's just so much nicer to use nice banana plugs. Just banana in. I'm also using a, a uh, monoprice hospital cable because it's such a pretty cable. I have no need no other reason. All right, Zeo does it make it sound better? Fuck no. But it's a nice. You buy the gray one. You buy the looped monoprice cables, and they don't come folded. They come in a big loop. There's no jank. That's all I want in my life. So let's, um, I should probably talk about the sub without this. We should talk about the speaker without a sub. So hold on, let me just undo this goddamn monstrosity. Sorry, baby, I'm gonna move you out. All 100 pound sub should come. with wheels. Uh, let's put this music back on. I'm gonna hear it. I'm gonna hear it. I'm gonna hear it sub free and I'll unplug this even though it makes no difference. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I used the locking RCA. I'm gonna destroy the speaker, aren't I? There we go. Yeah, a locking RCA's, uh, this part spins and when you tighten it, it squeezes the shield around and grabs. And it actually 
makes sense for a subwoofer specifically as a subwoofer cable because if it's shaking constantly you don't want this to like unplug just be careful because you try to pull it out after you've locked it i have yanked rca plugs out of units like bad like i've done bad so you don't want to do bad All right, oh, okay so now sitting here or standing here as i currently am with just the speakers and no sub the thing i want to do is i want to do bass one two three up and i'm gonna hit reset do bass one two three treble one lower the volume down a little bit by adding a subwoofer to any system you sort of increase the amount of volume you can under you, you could legally play legally there's legal things bird law look at bird law because by adding a sub you're able to push the bottom frequencies a lot easier and you just to catch up you got to raise the volume a little bit or you can raise the volume i'm going to say can so here this is by the way from akira if you haven't seen the anime akira this is tetsuo which is track four <laughs> Grand Budapest Hotel. When I first heard these, when I first hooked them up, because they did the sound demo before this, if you want to see sound demos, by the way, just like your patrons will get to bid on things, just like patrons will get to see reviews early, patrons also get to the sound demos. You're the only ones that get them now because YouTube, I can't trust YouTube and I can't trust lawyers. So all sound demos are now available only to $5 patrons and subscribe star subscribers. So the sound demo for these is the first thing I did with them. And when I hooked them up, I hooked them up immediately after the LS60, which is $7,000. The S300 Pro Air Pulse, which is $2,300. And then I went for this measly $900 set. So that's a hell of a, of a, of a, not a, of a downgrade in price from $7,000 to $2,300 to these $900. And I was prepared fully to put them up, do the sound demo, and then take them the fuck off the stands and put something else up. And I haven't done it. I, I was worried they were going to be like, oh, these are going to be ma lacking, missing, improper. You name the, the terms. That's what I was afraid of, the sound. We'll talk about the looks in a second because I'm not 100% sold on the looks. Build quality is fine. But I was worried about the sound, as you should be for a $900 speaker. And the sound... <laughs> It's proper, it sounds expensive, it sounds... Seems on the it's soft and expressive and it has amazing imaging and it's like, oh, and it does enough low end, not a lot of low end. But right there, you can hear boom, 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 boom. You raise the bass some more. Don't be afraid to use the bass and treble controls on a speaker. If you're anything like me, which God help you if you are, but if you're anything like me, you're like, no, flat. It should do it flat. And I learned my lesson over years and years and years of trying to like ignore the bass and treble knobs. They're more room correction than they are personal preference. I'm not saying get one of those fucking EQs with 37 things that you, oh, higher, lower. Oh, you know, it looks like a fucking wave everyone had in their stereos in the 80s. I'm not saying do that. But if you find that you're lacking a little bass because you've got a little bit more space behind the speaker than maybe it's designed to have, you raise the bass up one or two notches. And if you're too close to the tweeter or too far from the tweeter, raise a treble up a notch or two. Work it for the room. There's no reason you can't work it for the room. Right there, here, we'll sit down. That's just a beat, it's a Chemical Brothers beat, but it's just a beat. And I could tell you, is that speaker on? I don't know. Kind of sounds like it is, because it's imaging spectacularly. I don't have them upside down, by the way. I should, if I'm sitting up like this, ear, ear level eye height is tweeter. Flip them upside down if I was a little bit lower, if I slouched down, if I was like, yeah, let's do this. Then I would consider turning the speakers upside down like I did for the, um, the 300 Pros. Here, perfect. What is this? Jeff fucking Goldblum. If you haven't heard Jeff Goldblum singing and playing piano, go get the Capitol Studios uh, sessions. Jeff Goldblum. Life uh, finds a way. That's him playing piano. It's 
skip ahead? I can't skip ahead for some reason. I don't have my control. I gotta click it. Uh, there we go. Now I can skip ahead in the song. Down, Bubba, don't you blow your top. This is perfect music for these speakers. These speakers are doing, well, let's just say, Ellipson in general pops out of nowhere and they're like, hey, we make high end speakers. And the subwoofer for $900, I was like, eh, you're, yeah. If I would have heard these first, I'd be more excited for the Ellipson sub, which I'm gonna hook up now, in fact. Oh, it's such a big boy. It's such a simpleton sub. You would only get this if you are absolutely one of those people who needs to have all his products match. There we go. Um, I haven't done this before, so I'm just going to be like volume, max, crossover, half, kick it in the center. That's how we do it here on Zero Views. Give it a little, give it a little fucking kick. It's a clean, clear respectable speaker it absolutely competes with the triangles it destroys the smaller version of that the air pulse 100s the a100s thousand dollar speaker also had a shitty remote that was a shittier remote because it didn't have any options for the 1000s but um for the 1000 dollars a100s but this is a better remote for actual options but this, was the Houston this could absolutely, you could put this, you could set this up in a room at uh, Rocky Mount. Well, I say Rocky Mountain doesn't exist anymore. At uh, Axpona, and you'd be like, hey, we're selling this speaker, uh, $4,500. Straight up it's smooth and clean and clear, and I love a soft dome. There's several things about this speaker I love. I love a soft dome. I think I spit in it. I love a phase plug. If you don't know what a phase plug is, since the center is not moving and the cone is moving around the plug, it's helping to shape the air instead of just like the whole thing moving. It's just this. You're actually, it's, a lot of control is going into the speaker. All of this has to do with controlling the air waves coming out of it. This has to do with controlling the air waves coming out of it. All of this. I don't like the shiny front. I know that's like, I got this as a secondhand pair because APOS has been sending it around to different reviewers and it's, it's just had smudges all over it. I had to clean the whole thing because it's like someone else touched it. If it was my speaker, I wouldn't want to touch it, but it, someone touched it. If you don't like the grills, well, if you don't like the look, you can leave the grills on. I am not a huge fan of this. This is very vinyl looking. It's very boring vinyl. It's brown, boring, vinyl looking. And I think they could do better. Considering the subwoofer I just rolled away, for an extra $150, you can get this actual rose nut finish applied to it. That being two smaller boxes, they could probably upgrade the finish a little bit, but I get it. This is their first line. Like, what's, what did they do 10 years ago? They did nothing 10 years ago. So we're back to Jeff Goldblum again. I should probably plug the subwoofer cable back into this part of the speaker. I do this for a living. People are like, what do you do for a living, Zios? Um, you're watching me fail. Okay, now it, oh, I screwed that down like an idiot. Always good when this goes boop, boop. That's a sign that you're testing it and that everyone should leave you the fuck alone. Holy Jesus gods. Okay, we need to lower that. That's putting out more bass than the fucking HSU. Hopefully I'm not going to get copyright for that, although I probably am. I now have the volume at like 10 o'clock, so like barely on. Just filling in just a little bit. Are the speakers on their own? Fine. I could absolutely say $900, get them. I want to test now with this. Because if you're gonna, why is my mouse messing with me today? If you're going to consider $900 speakers, maybe you wanna consider the $900 matching sub, even though it's not in the sub crawl spot, which is back there. Just sort of here, just sort of fill in. Every speaker needs a subwoofer. Even, see these $7,000 speakers? Sound better with a subwoofer. See these $7,000 speakers? Sound better with a subwoofer. Better with a subwoofer. Uh, 
Maybe the HSU. Certainly better with a subwoofer. Subwoofer, not as much, but yep, need it. That like the like the gentle bell we're listening to right now. This is Trillium. Hold one second, please. I hear dripping. Give me a sec. Thank you everyone who supports on Patreon and Subscribestar. You keep this channel running in my house from doing this. Uh... Let's dry the floor with this Lasco blower fan. Thank God I have two of those now. If you watch my video where I built the uh, soot smoke filter, I'm gonna need it today because it's smoky out, but I'm trying to dry the floor. Let's get back to the ellipse and review. <laughs> it's been hours. Um, so here's the thing. Thank God we had this leak, or else I wouldn't have forget about forgot about this. I would have forgot about this feature. When you turn the speaker on, because it falls asleep after it doesn't get signal for a while, when you turn it back on, it slowly ramps up the volume. It doesn't have a tune. I forgot to mention in the LS60 review, when you turn it on, it plays a little ditty. Be like because it turns on like a fucking washing machine from Samsung. Um, this will blink and then things it won't turn on with signal, which might be an option to, to change. I just feel like the the amplification unit they use is relatively cheap. It's not like they built a $900 speaker and $400 of that went into the amplification module. $80 went into the amplification module. You're paying $200 extra for the convenience of having it built in and ready to go. Are they doing any DSP correction? I doubt it. Because they're running a single speaker cable with two connectors over. They already make, I'm assuming that their passes are pretty fucking amazing and they're just powering it with this. Oh, and so it ramps up and you got your blinky light and I've turned it on again. It does not turn on with signal as far as I can tell, at least through optical. That might be different from the analog inputs. Now that I have like a nightmare. And you know what? I clown on that subwoofer for being too expensive. That might actually be a better fit than the big bastard. That little guy right here in this spot, compared to the other one, is doing just as much to hold up these speakers as far as filling in the bottom end. So if I was reviewing this as an $1,800 2.1, let's say it was just like an edifier set, like you got it in the box, you got these speakers and that sub in one box, you plug in a power, you plug in power, you plug in your signal, you're done, you got a little remote, I think it's up there. I think it's worth $1,800. You can buy anything else. There's a ton of other stuff. When these are available, the the uh, Swan M300s, Mark IIs, they're better speakers for $900 and throw almost as much bass as it does with the sub, but they're not available. It's one of those things that like, can you even get it? You're not gonna get the $1,000 version of the AirPods because they're not good. And you have to spend another $1,000 on a sub to match it or, you know, get cheap stuff. Look, I am not disappointed with the way these sound. I'm a little disappointed with the quality of the finish, the vinyl on this, not real wood. I'm not a huge fan of the gloss. Hi, you can see my camera in it. I do love this. I love the aggressive um, waveguide or breakup. I guess you'd call that just a cone breakup that they put on it. That's a sign that they're trying something. They put it on that too. They might have put it on that for funsies because I don't think that's going to actually do as much as it would on a uh, sound producing, like the correct vocal clarity sort of hertz ratings. But they did something. They've accomplished something. I want to get the passive set. And if we go, and if you want to get, if you want to make your PP a little bit hard, just a little bit, even if you don't have one of those, where are they? Hold on. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. One of these has a back button. None of these have a back button. Oh, there we go. So here's what Ellipson's got. They've got rears for surround sound, uh, 600 bucks that do front firing, what looks like five and a quarter and two tweeters. And then you've got the passive speakers for 700, the passive eight inch speakers, which, which also have a, a, a phase plug, which I want to get those to listen to for a thousand. You've got a center channel that matches these called the 14C for 800. 
Actually, wait, that might be wrong. Let me match the big one for 800. And then you've got a $500 facet 11C, which is a smaller one, which makes perfect sense. And then you've got this smaller center channel, the 14 LCR, so you can get that for le left, center, right. I actually should get three of those to test. We've got some rain outdoor speakers that are also $700 and $800. The bigger sub, which is 10 inch, which I would tell APOS, look, don't send me the 10 inch sub. With the capabilities of the eight, I get it. With the capabilities of a 10, it's gonna be more, but it's still $1,300. It's at $1,300, then you just buy an SVS. It doesn't fucking have to match, you buy an SVS. Then you get to these. All right, we're about We've got turntables, and you've got tower, 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 uh, flat surround, and then the eight inch sub. $1,500 for each, so $3,000 a pair, 24 Fs. And then look at the nightmare of sound that it is that. This feels like one of those, I've seen the ads on Instagram for adrenal sound where they have these just monster towers. What even is, that is so aggressive looking that it's, it hurts my brain. Two tens on the bottom, two sevens and a tweeter. That's touching the floor. Imagine 10 inch, 10 inch, six inch, so bigger than this, cause it's only a five and a quarter. So wait a second, if this is only a five and a quarter, the other eight must be a six and a half because they're calling it a seven, but they're calling it an eight. Matters not. The point is having two tens sitting directly below a uh, MTM probably is insane. Now granted, $5,000 a pair. So I'm looking at you, we're looking at you. We're almost looking at you. So they have to be offering up some pretty heavy duty things to try. I wonder how much of this came first. Because if you're starting, oh, imagine this, I'm give a quick thing before I wrap up, because I know my videos are too long and no one stays to the end anyway. You wanna start an audio company. You wanna build speakers. You wanna build just like they have. You want the little tiny speakers and the big tower speakers. Which one are you building first? Are you building these? Or are you building the monsters and then working your way down? Because the two schools of thought are, you either, I would build two things. I would build the absolute incredible flagship to make your name in the papers. You go into Sound Advisor and all the other magazines. Look at these $80,000 speakers. And then you offer the ones for the plebs. You offer the, the, the affordable option using the technology, whatever you've got special. Obviously, this is Ellipson's thing, is the surround breakup, which is to, to, to control the sound that's coming out of it. This is their, that's their niche, all right? Klipsch has the horns and the gold drivers. Ellipson has the silicone rubber surrounds that break up things. And Kef has got their coaxial digital, coaxial, coaxial digital, coaxial drivers. All right, everyone's got their thing. So this is them showing off. So the, the afford, me now as the consumer will hear this setup for less than $1,000 and go, God damn, I wonder what that $5,000 tower will do. Because you know what? If it sounds like this, this, by the way, is from the Megalobox OST, which is has terrible recording quality. It like it clips internally in the sound, even on Spotify. But this music breathes. These speakers breathe. Vocal clarity, female vocals perfect, male vocals perfect. Great center imaging. I just I'm trying to sound like a like a speaker reviewer now, and that's not me. I'm Zeos. I'm not a YouTuber, I'm just a guy who just likes playing music and bullshitting about it. And my fucking shower is broken. No fighting! Or fucking, whatever the hell the boys are trying to do back there. They've actually got like a warmth to them, and I have the bass up a couple notches, let's reset everything. Because now that I plug that sub in, the sub is affected by the bass knob, so... Four. Yeah, these will definitely be someone's best speakers. Like, I got these ellipses back in 2023. Meanwhile, it's 2037. Still work great. Although, I don't know if the actual amplifier setup would work fine. Oh, also, and this has got to be something because this were a loan set, and I forgot to mention it to the um, to them. I had to build. You can see these little Mikey cables here. I had to build jumpers ugh, to go between here and here because it is a bi-wireable speaker. And there's, it was missing the bridges. So this is just me personally had to do that. I believe it's gonna come with your setup. So the fact that these speakers 
that they sell are biampable, top and bottom. Just automatically makes it like, oh, that's a special thing. So yeah, check these out. I have the sound demo uh, recorded. I have to upload it to Patreon, subscribe star. Um, well, it goes to the Telegram channel called the Sound Demo Oasis. We'll be able to listen to these and make comments on it. Um, and also get the lossless uh, recording of the Sound Demo. Uh, I probably, I didn't do it with the sub. So obviously I wouldn't test it with the sub. But yeah, no, let me uh, end this review now, finally. Did I tell you how much I love Predator 2? Not Predator 1. Predator 1 was great. Everyone knows Predator 1 is great. Predator 2 is a perfect sequel. Because it's like, all right, people against Predator again. But this time, instead of the jungle, how about LA? For a heat wave and a crime wave. Perfect. Put Danny Glover in it. Have him shoot some people. Have Jamaican uh, criminal organizations fight each other during the Predator thing. Ah, it's amazing. It's a, the third one could have been even better. It could have been just put it in Australia and the outback, like with hunters hunting. Ah, can we, ah you can't, you, it's not hard to make a good Predator movie. Just don't fuck it up like they've been doing the last 57 fucking Predator movies. Anyway, I'm done. Links to these, Patreon subscribe star, link to the sub, link to the monster sub. I gotta get around to doing more surround sound stuff. I know everyone's begging me for that. Um, check out Inner Fetish, check out the unboxing channel. Not enough people watch the unboxings. So when I open these up and get my first impressions, don't you want to see that? Even though it'll probably be a month late because that channel takes a low priority. If more people subscribe to that channel and comment on that channel, I would prioritize that channel, even make thumbnails for it. Right now it's just dump. Every other day, dump. One in the morning, dump. Anyway, I'm gone, you're done, we're done. Thank you for stopping by. Check out my Patreon, check out my subscribe star. Check out the public Telegram channel, at Z Reviews on Telegram. I come by there occasionally and clean house. That's fun. And uh, get the wallpaper in the word. I'm going to punch you both in the tits. Boy cats have tits. I know you have tits. I will punch you in them. They're fighting over the pillow. <laughs>